One of the greatest mysteries of the Nintendo Switch is its power. None of us really know exactly how much power the Nintendo Switch has. We don't know what the GPU is like, we don't know what kind of processors it has, and we just generally don't know what this console is capable of. And I think we're going to make the mistake of judging it by the size of the console. Think about it. Essentially, the console is a tablet, so you automatically judge that this console is not very powerful. And it might not be powerful. Today we're not here to see whether it is super powerful or super lame, because we just don't know. And that's what makes it a Switch file. So, we don't know exactly how powerful this console is, but we can speculate. Now, I'm not going to go into details about what processor it has, whether it's on Pascal or Maxwell, because we don't know. But let's talk about the superficial things. Let's talk about what this console can actually achieve in being a games console. Now, some of the things that people overlook are how much processing power it's actually using to create the world of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now a lot of people say, oh well the graphics are rubbish on um, Zelda Breath of the Wild and you know if you look at the textures they're kind of very plain, there's not a lot of large details in the maps, um, you know even though they've rendered loads of grass and things there's no sort of intricate details everywhere. And that's fair enough, that's a fair comment to make. But you will notice when you look at uh, Breath of the Wild, um, if you look closely you'll realize a couple of things. One is that when you're looking at a lot of footage, you can't see the intricate details like the grass because of the exposure. So say if you, I don't know, grabbed a full HD capture of um, Breath of the Wild and then you turn the contrast up and turn the exposure down, you would see that there's actually loads of blades of grass everywhere and loads of tiny little details. If you're looking at it, from a capture standpoint or, or you're standing behind somebody watching it on a television you can't actually see those details it all kind of washes out because of the style of the actual graphics but it doesn't mean that those details aren't there now the second thing that i wanted to mention is not necessarily the details in the graphics and the textures and the build of the game but the size and scope of the game so if you actually look at a map of Hyrule in Zelda Breath of the Wild and you look at a map of Skyrim or um, The Witcher 3 and you compare the size, they've compensated adding a lot of um, big assets like trees and things in a lot of areas to try and make the scale of the thing possible. And that is something that we need to talk about is the processing power involved in running the entire world that's that size without any loading screens. Because they couldn't do that on The Witcher. And on Skyrim, you know, I know that's an older game now, but they couldn't create a world that big and keep it consistent and open with no loading screens. They could with the size of Skyrim, but not the size of Breath of the Wild. So you've got to figure into things that the processing power needed to do that is actually quite big. So enough of Breath of the Wild, let's move on to another game. How about Seasons of Heaven? Now we haven't seen a whole lot of this game, it's clearly not finished. Even though the character models and the environment and everything has been built, clearly the animation hasn't been finished yet. But if you look at some full HD footage of Seasons of Heaven, you'll see the lighting, texturing, and the details, the small details in the models are actually really detailed to the point where we're looking at, you know, PS4 sort of details in a game. Now, I'm not saying that the Nintendo Switch is more powerful or as powerful as the PS4. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the graphics it's capable of producing visually in terms of um, volumetric lighting um, and light rays and texturing, you know, rendering those textures and stuff, is comparable to some of the games that you could produce for the play PS4. And that's just the level of 
graphical quality that you can get out of the Nintendo Switch. Another aspect, and this is a bit loose, but if you look at a game called um, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, and also Dragon Quest 11, which are both all three games are coming out on the Nintendo Switch. You get in now. This is one thing. You get in Dragon Quest Heroes one and two as one game. And think about that. If you go and look up these games, for some reason they're not really well publicized in the West. Don't ask me why, because these games are great, and I know they're very um, sort of. Uh, JRPG-ish so you know they probably keep it towards um, the Japanese market but if you look at what these games are capable of and how vast these open world RPGs are and how much processing power goes into pro producing these games on screen then it's actually quite impressive I've seen some footage of people playing the Switch version of um, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2 and that's all in one small cartridge so it's got to process those two massive open worlds and everything that's involved in the code and the graphics and the rendering of those two games in one game and they're really big really big games and they look amazing on the Switch, like the graphics are top notch. If you look at the PS4 version, I can't see any difference. In fact, the the Switch version actually looks smoother, so I'm, I've got a feeling it's probably the same graphics, but on the Switch, it's actually a higher frame rate from what I can see. Now, I'm not saying that that's a fact. I'm just saying that's how it appears to be. But if you look at the all these things together, you know, you look at Breath of the Wild and how much processing powers involved in creating that huge world you look at just the pure graphics quality of seasons of heaven and then you look at how much is crammed into one game with um, dragon quest heroes one and two i'm just saying perhaps we're underestimating what's under the hood of the nintendo switch and what it's capable of now it's speculated that if you use your hardware correctly in conjunction with your software, you can squeeze a lot more performance out of it. So there is a good chance that Nintendo Switch has got a kind of different but fairly mediocre um, processing power, but using the software and hardware together in the best way to get the most possible potential out of it it might actually be producing something that on the surface is better than you would expect. So all in all, the Nintendo Switch might be more powerful than you realize. Okay, it might not be more powerful than the PS4 or the Xbox One, but put it this way, if you're assuming it's half as powerful as the Xbox One, it's possible it might not be anywhere near as powerful as the Xbox One, but it might be able to perform just as well as the Xbox One in terms of how much it can render, the quality of the graphics, how much processing it can do. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be the most powerful GPU and processors and hardware to achieve the same thing as something more powerful. So that's food for thought. At the moment, we don't know until somebody gets a switch and opens it up and explains the intricacies. And I'm I'm not a hardware or software engineer. I don't know the intricacies. But I do know that the Nintendo Switch can perform better than I think a lot of people realize. And perhaps that's why Nintendo aren't telling us what's under the hood yet. Not because they're trying to hide how weak it is, but because they want to surprise us with how well it can perform, even if the hardware suggests it's not that powerful. And that's why the capabilities of the Nintendo Switch are the biggest Switch file of them all.